All right, welcome back to liquid viscosity. Yesterday, we took some data and figured out which of the liquids were which. And now we are going to turn all of these numbers into a picture. Because when people look at all these numbers, they often get confused and just see numbers. We like to see pictures. Think of the National Geographic magazine. When we look at National Geographic, we love this magazine because it's full of pictures. You can almost never, ever find an area where it's all written word on either side of the page. So National Geographic is one of the best selling magazines in the world because it is full of pictures. So that's why we graph, to make a picture of data. So let's go through the process. You'll want to hold your graph paper like this so it's longer than it is higher. And the first thing we need to do is draw our X and Y axis. So let's do that. Okay, so notice how we've drawn in, leave about five or six blocks so we have room to write. And we go up five or six blocks so we have room to write. Now the next thing we need is a title. So we're going to call this something like liquid viscosity. And you always put your title up at the top so we know what the graph is about. It's kind of like if there's a picture of somebody, you don't know who they are. You don't know who the picture is a picture of. Then we figure out what we're putting on our X and our Y axis. The Y axis is up and down. The X axis goes across. The way I remember that is like this. The letter Y has a tail that goes straight down. So that's the Y axis. The letter X, if you'd sit on it, it would flatten it out like that. So it goes horizontal. So that's your Y axis. That's your X axis. Now I tell you here, on the y-axis, you put time on there, and on the x-axis, we put the name of the liquid. So we'll turn this sideways like this. We always go time, and then we need to know what our units are. This is our label. Is it time in minutes, hours, days, months, years? No, it's time in seconds. So we put time in seconds. So we have our unit and our label. That's essential. Down here, what we want is our liquid type. So we need to know that these things we're putting on here is the type of liquid. So that is our unit. And our labels then will be the specific ones. Now we have to figure out how to label the numbers. Because we don't want our graph to be teeny tiny and we don't want it going off the top of the uh, graph. We don't want to have it uh, go beyond the, the, their limitations. So as we look at our numbers here, we see for our average times we had about somewhere around one second and all the way up to like 32 seconds. So it looks like if we figure it out, we can just let each block here, each line be two. So that'd be like two, four, six, and so on. All right, so by having each line on the graph paper, each horizontal line being two seconds, we can pretty much fill up our available space without going beyond or having it be really, really tiny. Now remember, a graph is just a picture of data. It's not going to be absolutely exact. So when you're taking and graphing 1.8, we'll be using the average numbers, of course, you don't try too hard to say, well, where's 1.8? Well, it's going to be a little bit under 2. Now the next thing I want you to do is to graph it from least viscous to most viscous. So that would be fastest to slowest, so your graph will go up. So now you simply take and rank your data. This would be 1. This would be 2. So that's 1.8, 1.87. Let's see. This one's the next fastest, or next slowest. That'd be 3. Then we go to 4, then 5, and then the slowest was 6. By ranking the data, we now know the order. So this will be the first one, second one, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. It goes from the smallest number, then gradually up to the biggest number. Then we're going to put these on our x-axis. Now we're going to have to space them out so that we have enough room. We don't want to squish them all together, and we don't want to start making them so far apart that we run out of room. So let's think about that for a little bit. All right, so I've got my bars and my bar graph spaced out nice so it fills up most of the space, and they're evenly spaced. We've got two blocks between each one. Now I have cleverly 
mixed up the order in which you're going to be putting your words. So please, when you're looking at the sample hammock corn strip, don't put them in the same order. These are wrong. I have done this to make sure that you have to look at your data and don't just blindly follow along. So simply then take your number, like whatever it is, 1.8 here, and approximate where that would be, and so on and so forth. When you're done then with your graph, double check to make sure it has all the things a graph needs. All graphs need a title. All graphs need units and labels. All graphs need the numbers evenly spaced. All graphs need on the x-axis the units and the labels evenly spaced. And then you need to draw your bars. You don't have to write least to most, that's just to remind you. So when your graph is done, that's how we do bar graphs in science. You will take and put that with your data chart with your name on it. You will staple it on and you will put that in the inbox and have a seat. Okay.